well, we're still in AD 29, and we're going to wrap up the uh, events that seem to have occurred right at that time of event 53 in Capernaum. And perhaps as they were leaving Capernaum, uh, there are three uh, approaches to disciples. And uh, we move from the character of a disciple, uh, that is knowing his heart, and uh, we now move in, and who's the greatest is the beginning of this topic. And now we move to the cost of discipleship. And there are three people that Jesus deals with here. The first one is a volunteer that comes to him in verse 57 of uh, Luke chapter 9. And he says, I'll follow you wherever you want to go. And uh, here, uh, while he's a volunteer, Jesus quickly says, uh, you better evaluate the cost, he said, uh, because um, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but I have no place to lay my head. Perhaps he was looking at this man's heart and thought that this man's motives were to see that uh, Jesus was going to begin his kingdom but he was really going for crucifixion, not coronation. And he wanted to be sure this man understood the cost and that, that this wasn't going to be to take rulership. The second person that uh, is confronted is actually Jesus confronts him. And that is, he says, follow me. And this man, uh, as he is approached by Jesus about following him, says, first, let me bury my father. Well, that sounds like a reasonable request. If his father had died, of course, we don't know whether he had or not, but the, the whole burial situation for a father would drag on for weeks. And uh, maybe he was just looking for an excuse not to come and follow him. Nevertheless, uh, Jesus sees the heart and he knows the heart. And uh, he says, let the dead bury the dead. And uh, you need to go and preach the kingdom of God. Uh, so we, we see again uh, that uh, other things have to uh, be put aside if you really want to be a follower of Christ. Certainly not teaching disrespect for parents, uh, but seeing the hearts of men. And finally, the third one, uh, we find another volunteer who says, I'd like to follow you, but first let me go and say my goodbyes. And again, Jesus likely seeing the heart of this man was hoping that his family would talk him out of making such a radical decision, uh, but not wanting to seem like he wasn't truly a disciple, uh, wanted to go back home so that uh, he'd have a chance to be talked out of this activity. It all reminds me of uh, a conversation I had with my father when I decided to go into the ministry. I was in the midst of my business career. I was working as an executive in a corporate office with uh, horrendous responsibilities, um, a company with five different plants, a company with 6,500 employees. Uh, my uh, direct reports were four, uh, but I had indirect responsibility for literally hundreds of materials people in uh, various plants. And uh, uh, my dad said to me, he says, why in the world are you going into the ministry now? Uh, when you're in the height of your earnings potential, uh, the age that you are, this is the age that you will make the greatest amount of money that you'll ever make in your life. And you're certainly in a very responsible position. So why don't you wait till you're 65, have earned a lot of money, and then go ahead and go into the ministry? I remember my response to my father. I remember telling him that, Dad, I, I certainly respect your opinion, uh, but I don't think I want to give God a burned out man, a burned out businessman. I'd like to give him a man in his most vital and uh, most energetic and most uh, usable time of my life. And uh, I resigned my position with the company that I was working with. and entered into the ministry for a salary that was um, far, far, far less than what I was making. But I've never regretted it. And I've never looked back and said, what if? Because I believe that I was in the center of God's will. And there's nothing better than being in the center of God's will. 
And Jesus responded to this last man. He said, nobody after putting their hands to the plow looks back is worthy of the kingdom. And I think that's absolutely true. When you've decided to follow Jesus, you're basically waving a white flag and saying, I surrender all. And you move forward with what God has for you. And you don't look back. Because if you've ever watched a farmer that's plowing a field, he can't plow a straight line if he keeps looking back. You have to keep looking forward. That's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.